All right, YouTube. I'm gonna, I'm gonna change it up a little bit with this video. It's not gonna be a toy video, but don't worry, I will do more toy videos. I just wanted to, had another idea, wanted to get it out there. Uh, I'm gonna rank every Deep Purple album from worst to best. I can't do that with that many bands, because I don't have entire discographies of all my favorite bands, but I do with Deep Purple, because they're next to Pink Floyd and Queen, they're my favorite band, and they're the most fun to collect, because they got millions and millions of uh, live albums and stuff to collect, but we're leaving out the live albums. Uh, I'll mention them whenever they're relevant to whatever studio album we got, but that being said... Of the 21 albums I'm going to review, number one, or 21, let's do In Concerto for Group and Orchestra. Uh, this is the worst one because, yeah, I respect it for coming up with a big, crazy concerto written by John Lord. This is boring as hell. Very boring as hell. Uh, they... Did a more modern version of it. Forgot what year, but I got the uh, some crappy reissue. It was edited down. They left out a lot of it, but this was pretty good. Uh, all the all the songs that they did with the orchestra, not this one. This one was poor. I got the remastered version. I also have the record, um, but the remastered version comes with the probably the first appearance of Hush with Ian Gilling. Singing, uh, it comes with, uh, I'm doing Ring That Neck and Child in Time. This is very boring, though, I'm going to say. I only listened to it once. It's only, I only got through it once, except for the, the other songs, which you're not going to get on your original edition. You can skip this one. This is the last Deep Purple album I bought. This is the last thing on my checklist I ever had to get, as far as. But, all right, let's go... Mainstream, regular uh, studio albums. Number 20, Rapture of the Deep. I've recently re-listened to every Deep Purple album because I go for walks every night, uh, try to exercise, but... Ugh, I really only really like the song Rapture of the Deep. Uh, very forgettable album. All songs are kind of slow-moving, groove-plotting stuff, and... I listened to uh, Live in Montro album and one of the best songs, I forgot it was the Things I Never Said on here. I was like, wow, that probably in a Rapture of the Deep. I've only listened to Rapture of the Deep maybe like two, three times and yeah, that song wasn't on it. It's a bonus track from European edition, import. So... The only other song I like on the album isn't even on the version I got. Uh, number 19. Abandon. I can never sit through this whole album. I always put it on the car, give it another shot, and get. I still don't like it. And I like Steve Morse. So far he's not batting so well on uh, my list. He's got two in the bottom. And... Any Fool Know That I kind of like. Watching the Sky, I kind of like to do a remake of Bloodsucker. Everything else is just boring and forgettable. What do we got next? We're going to give Trashing the Steve Morse era break. And we're going to go to Who Do We Think We Are? Yeah, the Mach 2 version. Um, this is their worst album. Pretty boring. I mean... You can listen to it and turn it on. It's just mostly forgettable. You got Woman from Tokyo. Good. I like Smooth Dancer. But the rest of the stuff's also forgettable. And I hate that the fact that they keep trying to make Mary Long happen and keep throwing it in the live sets. Uh, I guess after playing the Made in Japan set for years and years and years, they went a little bit deep, dig deeper into... The, the classic albums, but that's the one they could have forgot, you know. Number 17. I don't not like this album, but 
Yeah, it's better than the other two Steve Morse era albums, but Blackmore's my guy. But that said, we're going to forgive the fact that they're, you know, Blackmore's been going for 25 years. Uh, I like Time for Bedlam, Hip Boots, Birds of Prey is really good, The Surprising's really good. I just don't feel the need to throw this album on very often. So that's why you're pretty far down the list. Forgot to mention this. I saw the Infinite Tour. Uh, double Bill, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper went on first. This is probably one of the saddest concert experiences I ever saw. Uh, Alice Cooper killed it. Nobody should ever follow Alice Cooper. He is the best showman ever. Uh, especially Deep Purple. They don't have a lot of flash in their stuff. They don't got creatures. They don't got costumes and stuff. They just jam out. Uh, yeah, half the audience left at the, the stupid amphitheater I went to. And it's kind of sad seeing my, you know, all-time favorite bands uh, being disrespected like that. But So, kind of put a damper on that. Thought I'd mention it. Because they played a lot of new stuff off this, and I like the new stuff that they played off of this. So, the album's got kind of a sad spot for me, seeing Deep Purple go out like that. Because, you know, this is the final round of touring that they're, they're, they're doing. The worst album by... My second favorite version of the band, Deep Purple. It's not as a bad album, it just got no real good classics on it. Chasing Shadows is good. Uh, Painters, all, all these songs are alright, it's just, I don't know, something about it. I just never, it's not as good as the other two Mach 1 versions, uh, albums. Um, plus it's got a really ugly cover. Not the remastered version of it, but like the, the inside cover. Really ugly, like medieval looking Renaissance painting thing. It always creeped me out, and I'm, one other reason why I don't pick this album up to listen to it very often. Number 15, Fireball. Uh, they kind of go up and down. Every other Deep Purple album seems to be good. Not, not a complete rule, but not as good as in rock, and Machine Head's way better. Um, Fireball is a great song. Demon's Eye is a great song. I don't like anyone's daughter. The Mule is I don't care about. Um, if you didn't get the original, if you got like the original version, I don't even think Strange Kind of Woman's on it. You had, you know, you'd have to get that off the of greatest. Truth be told, uh, Deepest Purple is my favorite Deep Purple album, and that doesn't count because it's the greatest hits. But you know, all those songs are on that album, all the good stuff, and you won't have to listen to the the leftover crap. So, yeah. At best, if it's five stars, it's only like three, two and a half. High twos, not even quite a three. I don't really care about the other stuff. Not to say the songs on it are good, aren't good, but, you know. Alright. Number 14, Now What? Uh, Alright, Steve Morse era. Done by Bob Ezrin once again. He also did uh, Infinite. Um, I like this one better. Hell to Pay is a great song, probably the last rocker, because there wasn't really one on Infinite. Vincent Price I like. Uh, what other one I like? Après Vous. Après Vous I really like. I, I, when I saw them on this tour, that was like a big standout for me for the concert. It's also good, not, not great, but it's better. Moves up the list. It's not that far down. I will throw this one on from time to time. Number 13. Stormbringer. Got some really cool songs on here, and I do like the lineup, but... Like I said earlier, like every other album. Burn was great. You haven't seen me mention that one yet. Well, you know why? Because it's up the freaking list. Stormbringer, not so much. Even though I love, like, all the live albums from this period. Uh, like Made in Europe and stuff like that. Uh, Song Stormbringer's good. Lady Double Dealer I love. Highball Shooter I love. Why does every metal band or a hard rock band have to have a song called Gypsy? It's okay. Soldier of Fortune I love. So I'll Blackmore's Night play that. Good song. Uh, next after that, number 12, we got Perpendicular. See, Steve, I don't, there's not a whole lot of hate for Steve Morse, because it's the only version of Deep Purple I've seen live. But I saw Blackmore's Night, I saw... White Snake on the Purple Tour, and you know, but this one's got some classics on it. They never play Ted Mechanic Live no more. Why? I love that song. Uh, 
What was the other one? I'm not your lover. That's a good one. Sometimes I feel like screaming. That's a good one. I don't play this one that often, but I can't deny this one's really good. Um, it's a complete change of sound from Battle Rages on the album earlier. I haven't mentioned that one. It's a big surprise coming up. Ooh, ooh. So here's a controversial pick. Um, number 11. In rock. Everybody else would probably have this top one, number one, number two, maybe even three. For me, it's only 11. Like I said before, I love the album Deepest Purple. I, it's got all the best stuff on there, but I don't really throw this one on that much. Uh, yeah, I love the sound. I don't even hate one song on this album, but it's just not one of my favorites. It's a controversial pick, I know, but, you know. Black Knight, love it. But that was another thing. If you didn't have this remastered version, I don't think Black Knight was on it. So you would have had to get the greatest hits. Ooh, number 10. Number 10. I love this album, but I couldn't justify putting it higher. Come Taste the Band. I'm going to say this is the first real White Snake album. Uh, yeah, David Coverdale went on to White Snake with. Ooh, Ian Pace, John Lord, uh, doesn't sound like previous Deep Purple because there's no Richie Blackmore. We had Tom McBall on us, and he is sick. Also, he's got the best, worst live album ever. I got two live albums from this era. This time around, which is the full version of uh, Last Concert in Japan, and extended versions, which came out under like a whole bunch of different versions called... On the wings of a Russian fox bat, and uh, it's basically the King Biscuit Flower Hour tapes. But I love this album. It's sick, it's dirty, it's cool hard rock and stuff. This is like if you followed the progression of music afterward, this kind of leads into the early sound of White Snake. Not like, you know, the 1987 album, but the early stuff. Um, kind of moves in that direction. I haven't heard Glenn Hughes' early solo stuff, so who knows where that kind of went, but. That's on there. Band completely imploded after that, and you would know that from these live albums. High on coke. Drunk. Bad, but interesting. I liked hearing a train wreck live, and that's what most of these were. But the songs they wrote for this album they played live all sounded sick. Ooh, number nine. Number nine. I love this album, but I also couldn't justify throwing it up any higher. House of Blue Light. It's a weird one. Uh, yeah, it's a step down from Perfect Strangers, which I haven't mentioned yet. Guess what? Uh, I love Unwritten Law, Dead or Alive. Every song on here is just cool, fun, 80s, weird, deep purple. Not dark and... or not Deep purple's not really dark, but like gritty and... There's not there's nothing in rock about this, but I I jam this one out a lot more than I do in rock. I can't I can't justify that as but it's just a cool album. It just it hits me. All right, now here we go. Oh yeah, plus another spot on that Nobody's Perfect album. I got the shitty version. That, you gotta get the double disc because then it'll have the live versions of uh, songs from this. This only got one, which was Hard Loving Woman. And the other versions got like Dead or Alive, so get the import. Maybe a little controversial, it's only at number eight, but Burn. Uh, the best album from Coverdale era. Uh, song Burn, top five Deep Purple song. Um, might Just Take Your Life, Lay Down, Stay Down. Mistreated. Uh, they're all great, but I don't play this album as much as the stuff higher on the list. Not to say that this isn't like as good as Deep Purple can get, but there's a few albums I just like a little bit more. And I love, well, I love the, uh, I got their live performance of uh, California Jam. Great version of this. And I don't know, it's, it should, like, the top albums here, they got so many really great albums that something's got to be slightly lower on the list. But I love collecting stuff from this era also. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Here's a, here's, a, here's a controversial pick. Number seven. Slaves and Masters. What? That's Jolyn Turner. Yeah, but I love Rainbow. You can't talk about Deep Purple without talking about Rainbow. Like I said, uh, Come Taste the Band is where, you know, Deep Purple kind of fades into early White Snake. Deep Purple after Stormbringer kind of became Rainbow. Because, like, if you follow, like, the lineage of the band, like, the actual sound of it, their musical direction, it just goes into... Rainbow is Deep Purple with, like, a new lineup. And Rainbow had, like, a new lineup every album. But, uh, this is where, like, where Stormbringer leaves off, Rainbow begins, and then where Rainbow ends, you kind of pick up again. The next logical album would sound like Perfect Strangers. Ian Gillen gets booted out of the band after... House of Blue Light, we get this. We get another Rainbow album. This is basically a Rainbow album. Some of the songs in the middle I don't really like, but if you ever heard a bootleg of this concert tour, it is sick. It makes these songs even better. Uh, Cut Runs Deep is insane. Live. King of Dreams, I love live. They turn King of Dreams kind of into like a Perfect Strangers kind of long jam. I love it. Wicked Ways, one of my favorite Deep Purple songs. Nobody else is going to say that. Why does the phone keep ringing? Stop ringing, I ain't answering. Alright, we're, we're, near, we're near the top of my list and it's going to get a little bit weird now. Uh, number six. Most people have this down by the bottom. I love Bananas. Went and saw this tour. Love the tour. Uh, it was probably this, my second favorite concert of all time. My favorite one was when I went to see Pink Floyd in 94 at Yankee Stadium. Then this, I saw him at the Beacon Theater. 2004, I think? But, yeah, I love this album. Just lots of good songs. House of Pain. Haunted! Underrated song. Them doing a ballad. They never really do full-on ballads. They did that. Uh, I Got Your Number. I love that song. A lot of good songs. Not great songs, but the album's really solid, and I love it, and I crank this one all the time. Uh, number four, four and five. Kind of a tie. I don't know which one to pick first, but we're, we'll just say... Number five, we're going to go Shades of Deep Purple. It's got Hush, Hey Joe, Mandrake Root. Mandrake Root is really, you know, the big long middle part of uh, Space Trucking on Made in Japan and most of the other albums where they got like the 25 minute version of, uh, of Space Trucking on there. But uh, I love this album. This is one of the first Deep Purple albums I got. It was like a budget cassette that was like $4.99. I remember reading about Deep Purple. Uh, this big... With Metal Edge History, a heavy metal magazine that I got when I was first getting into music. It was like, I gotta hear Deep Purple. And then they mentioned uh, the, the first lineup. I was shocked. This sounds nothing like uh, what I was expecting. I was expecting something to sound more like, you know, In Rock or uh, uh, Perfect Strangers. I don't even know because it came out in the late 60s. I should have been, you know, duh. It's not gonna sound anything like that. Um, but then after that, we get number four. Book of Taliesin. This one gets even weirder. The first song, Listen, Learn, Read On, is straight up like weird psychedelic stuff. Ring Neck Neck, great song. Kentucky Woman. Oh my god, I love that song. Uh, Neil Young cover, but they're not Neil Young, Neil Diamond. And River Deep, Mountain High. My One of my favorite sides of any Deep Purple album is side one, where they go, Listen, listen Learn, Read On, Ring Neck Neck, Kentucky Woman. And then it goes into Beatles, We Can Work It Out, with like this cool jam in the middle. I think it was, what was it? It was uh, 2001 that they did. Alright, top three. Maybe a little controversial. Two big ones you know I had mentioned, you know they're going to be at the top of the list. Battle Rage is on. Yes, Ian Gillen's back. Uh, when I first started listening to music, this is... This was the current album that came out. I only had like probably two at the time. I think I had Deepest Purple and Perfect Strangers. This came out. Did not disappoint. A uh, few years back, they started playing the Battle Rages on again, live. Um, which I saw that on the tours I went to, but they didn't. Uh, Anya's great. This kind of fades back into, like I said, with Rainbow. Um, the next album... Richie Blackmore did with Stranger in Us All, with his Return to Rainbow. Sounds a lot like this album. So we got a... Deep Purple kind of followed Richie Blackmore's musical direction, and I... 
He's my favorite guitarist. Come on. I love this album. It's not going to be on a lot of people's favorite list, or maybe it is. You hardcore Deep Purple fans, you might you might agree with me on that one. So at least top two. Yeah, there's no big surprise here. Seeing as though In Rock was down the list, we got Perfect Strangers. This was the first Deep Purple album I ever bought. Which, I was a little shocked. I thought they were going to be harder and heavier than that, but... Because uh, this was 80s, and I got that around, like, 92, so this was a very weird and dated sound to me, but... I got into it. A couple listens, I got into this one. Perfect Strangers song really hooked me. That was, like, the first song on the second side. Gypsy's Kiss blew me away. Uh, the whole second side, knocking on your back door really grew on me now, now I love it. Uh, every song, there's no, no filler, all killer on this one. So, what does that leave us with number one? Well, of course there's going to be Machine Head. Highway Star, probably the best Deep Purple song. Uh, Smoke on the Water, probably the third best Deep Purple song. I can't think of what I'm going to put at number two, but... They never, they hardly ever close with that one. They always put that like at the end before the encore. Space Truckin'. Space Truckin's the second best Deep Purple song. That's what I'm saying. It's the Gillen lineup. Uh, Mach 2. Mark 2, Mach 2, whatever, I forget. That's my Deep Purple whole lie. What, what else we got in the box here? Let's look at everything else I have. Let's run it down. This is bonus content. It's a weird budget import version. I got for like four or five bucks. Uh, I think these are leftover tracks from all the live albums with multiple names. This is a superior version, I think, of Made in Japan. It was recorded for some some weird European radio broadcast. It's got basically the whole Made in uh, Machine Head album live. It's a newer one, more newer lineup playing. Uh, Oh wait, this was uh, those those two. I forget the name of them. I'll put it. I'll write it on the bottom. Those two albums, yeah. Made in Europe. Mentioned this one earlier. Then this is my true true favorite Deep Purple album. But we're, we can't count this. Uh, they updated it with the Rhino series, and they put like you know, I think knocking at your back door and Perfect Strangers on there. But it's still. Cuts out some stuff. I gotta do a lot of editing on this. This video went on way too long. Here's one just to mention. When we rock, we rock. When we roll, we roll. Uh, I already have every song on this. I don't know why I collect all the like the greatest hits. But I just like it because of the weird packaging. Look at that. It looks like an inside of a space truck and spaceship or whatever. It kind of looks like a studio mixed with the spaceship control. So I bought this just because of the cover. I liked it. And... Yeah, why not? If I mention Rainbow and White Snake, you can't overlook uh, Ian Gillen's uh, solo stuff too. Like where I said, uh, Rainbow picks up and leaves off in between Blackmore stints and Purple. If you listen to Ian Gillen's Born Again album, uh, super heavy album, but sounds like the musical direction he was in with the Gillen band. Not the Ian Gillen band. The original Ian Gillen band was like his weird jazz fusion that didn't go nowhere. So record company's like, hey, go make a, a, a albums that sound like Deep Purple. And it sounds like a really heavy Deep Purple. So if you mix like Rainbow, uh, Difficult to Cure, Bent Out of Shape with uh, Gillen, you got Perfect Strangers. That's where we pick back up. Alright, if you like this, you want to see me do uh, Queen, or Pink Floyd, or Rainbow Albums, uh, I can do Blue Oyster Cult too. I, I've got all their albums. Um, like it, share this, do whatever. I'll, I might make another video. Either that or I'm going back to making more toy videos, because I love them.